So now that we've seen a couple examples of how sampling bias and sampling error can occur, let's expand that to a more involved example. A newspaper at a large college wants to determine whether sexual harassment is a problem across campus for all students. The paper takes a simple random sample of a thousand students and asks each person whether he or she has been a victim of sexual harassment on campus. About 350 students refused to answer the question. Of those who did answer, 2% say they have been victims of sexual harassment. The college claims that sexual harassment is not a large problem at the campus based on these results. All right, so let's back up for a second and ask ourselves, is the purpose of doing this study descriptive or inferential, explained in the context of the situation? Well, it's been a while since we've looked at those, but descriptive statistics, if you remember, is just describing what is occurring. So ch charts, tables, averages, percentages, those are descriptive statistics. They're numbers and tables that um, measure what is occurring and kind of organize it in a way that's easy to understand. Inferential is when you want to try to take what you've learned from your sample and apply it to a larger group. And that's obviously what's happening in this particular case. So this is inferential because the college wants to figure out what's going on for the whole campus, not just the 1,000 students that they had in their random sample. So let me type that up. There we go. And the key to this, of course, is the college claiming, right? College claims that sexual harassment is not a problem, large problem on campus based on these results. So they're making an inference about the whole campus based on these results. That totally makes it inferential, right? Okay, now explain why we should be cautious about using the 2% value as an estimate for the population percentage of those, um, excuse me, of those who have not, excuse me, who have been victims of sexual harassment. Um, and it's not the two small sample things. So I just want to get into that a little bit because a lot of students will see this and say a thousand how is that fair how is that okay matter of fact they'll say that for national polls but if you've ever paid any attention you realize that cnn fox news npr whatever news organizations and outlets tend to do around a thousand for the whole country so a thousand is actually completely fine we'll learn why that is in chapter nine but it's not too small a sample for no matter how big this college is. It could be a college of 10,000, could be a college of 50,000, 1,000 will be fine. So that's not the problem. The problem is this right here. 350 students are refusing to answer. That is non-response bias, right? So you have a whole group of students that are refusing to answer the question. Maybe they don't feel safe answering the question. Maybe they just don't care. Maybe whatever. We don't know. But whatever's going on with them, they're creating some problems with our results because we don't know if those 350 students are more likely to be ones that are sexually harassed and just don't feel strong about coming forward. So let me pause it and type that up. And there we have it. So there were 350 students who refused to answer. This is a large non-response bias, and that should make us cautious about using the 2% result. Um, that might be very inaccurate because it's very possible, we don't know, but it's very possible that the students that are harassed are not responding to the survey. They're afraid, they have psychological trauma, they don't want to relive their experiences, whatever, and they're not responding to the survey at all. And that's creating problems for our results. All right, next, a story titled Personals, Sex Sites Changing the Rules of Love at msnbc.com reports results of a study about online dating by the MSNBC network. The study used online responses of 15,246 people. Well, that's a lot of people. So of those who responded, three-fourths were men and about two-thirds had at least a bachelor's degree. One report finding um, was that 29% of men go online intending to cheat, quote-unquote. So identify the potential bias in the study that results from sampling bias and response bias. Okay, so there's a couple kind of biases happening in here. Matter of fact, there could possibly be more because we don't know how they asked the questions. So there could have been um, biased questions in what they asked, but we can definitely tell there's a couple problems here. The first part is sampling bias. So if you remember, sampling bias, let me scroll back up here, is when you take a sample that is not representative of the population. And that is very much happening here due to a convenience sample. Since it's an online poll, only people that are online and going to these sites in the first place are ever going to bother filling out the survey. So all the other people are not responding, not answering for whatever reason. 
So since it's an online poll, it is automatically, um, this is not always the case, but in these, for the vast majority of online surveys, it is the case that it's just completely convenient sample and therefore it's biased to whoever happens to be online, whoever happens to care, whoever happens to be using the dating network or in this case on the MSNBC network in the first place. There we have it. So the survey was conducted online by MSNBC. That means it's a convenient sample and it's automatically biased towards, first of all, people that are online. That tends to exclude poorer people. That's happening less and less because um, being online is becoming more and more of a human right and a, a public right. But nevertheless, it's still poorer people are not on that so much. And those who are using MSNBC, because MSNBC con conducted the poll, so it would naturally be on their network. And therefore, that create some problems, right? Because you have to be on MSNBC and care enough about the topic to actually respond. So that's all sampling bias. Now response bias, um, let's think about this. Those are the, the questions was poorly worded. Well, we don't really know because we don't know the question, but we can kind of tell the question based off of, we don't know the type of question. We don't know about data entry area, but we do kind of tell this. And the way we can spot it, and the misrepresenting answers is probably part of this as well, it's the intending to cheat part right here. So 29% of men go online intending to cheat. That wording is pretty negative. So you might end up with a much higher rate if you asked in a different question. So do you go online seeking companionship? Do you go online, you know, whatever. But if you say, I go online intending to cheat, only a certain type of person is going to say, yes, I want to cheat. You know, people are generally good, at least I believe so. So they're not going to say, oh yeah, I want to, you know, mess people over <laughs> and ruin my relationships. You know, people don't think that way. They don't work that way. So um, the sampling bias part is more the aqua here. And then this response bias part is more the intending to cheat. So you can tell by the way that they phrase that, that that's kind of a negative thing. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'll type that up one second. There we have it. So the phrase, quote, intending to cheat, end quote, is a very negative phrase. And so very few people are likely to select that as an answer. That could be why um, there's the result of only 29% of men selecting yes to that. I threw in the word only because that's a pretty low number if you're talking about online dating sites. Remember, this is the context of online dating. It's not just going online in general to Google something, right? So it's going to online um, to those dating sites. All right, so because that's so such a negative phrase, you know, I want to cheat, since that's negative, people are not going to say yes to that. And that's creating possibly some response bias. We don't know, but that, seem, that would seem to be a likely result of writing it in that way. So just on a little side note um, before we leave this section behind, so polls where the sample is taken in a biased way, such as in this last example, which did come from MSNBC, um, they are called unscientific by media. So you'll hear um, people on news or people on your podcast or whatever say, you know, we had an unscientific poll and it result the results were blah. And Quite frankly, once you hear the words unscientific, you should just stop listening because they are statistically worthless. Um, there's no reason to do them other than for the people that are touting them on whatever talking head show you happen to be watching um, to have something to talk about because the 24 seven news cycle means they always have to have something, some hype growing up. So they will create these polls and then have people talk about them forever on their morning shows. Um, it's not just the media, but of course the media is particularly egregious about this, but it happens all over the place. So politicians saying, you know, you know, 87% of my supporters believe blah. Well, yeah, but how did you conduct that poll? Because if you did it in an unscientific way, which quite frankly, a lot of them do in order to get the results that they want so that they can talk about them, then it's all garbage. And for a seven minute little quick radio article um, about how stupid polls like this are, and matter of fact, they use the words, these polls are stupid, then um, I recommend clicking on this bit.ly link and just listening to the seven minute um, radio article by On The Media from National Public Radio. They get very upset about it for good reason, because um, the news media in particular is very bad about using these kinds of polls to talk about them as if they have meaning and when they really don't. And that can be, quite frankly, dangerous. It's one thing when you're talking about, you know, oh, how crazy is this pop star or whatever, you know, um, it's meaningless, but it's relatively harmless. But the thing is, it bleeds into things that do have meaning. And 
when people don't know the difference and can't suss out which are good polls, which are bad polls, that can create a dangerous situation for all of us. Um, all right, so we are done with section 1.5. I'll see you back here for more lectures.